So we backed up our argument with Adams. And when we moved into Japan a month or so later, we saw firsthand that we'd been mighty convincing. We saw a lot of this and some of this. Sort of gave a guy the shakes. That is until he... What happened? Well, I've got the idea across. I'll have this gizmo fixed in a second. Then put on something easier to take. A root and tootin' western. Men fighting it out the old-fashioned way. Yeah, none of that Adam business. Why not? It's our business. You saw what happened in Japan. What if it happened here? What would you men do? Well, that's easy. I'd go see a tailor. Tailor? Sure, have my uniforms altered. Have them cut to let my wings out. All God's children's got them, you know. I'd take music lessons on the harp. Right? Well, I'd... No, nah, that wouldn't do. I think I'd... You tell us. Okay. Come on. Learn and live. Target for today. This doesn't represent any place in particular. It's typical, and it's important. For shipping, by both water and by rail. For factories. For its big business. It's the kind of a city an enemy would want to knock out. A spot where he might drop an egg, an atomic egg. What an omelet that'd make. Yeah, with us in it, maybe. But not necessarily. Look, I won't kid you about the A-bomb. I've seen what it can do in Japan, Bikini, and a Wetuk. It's deadly. It's like a woman. That I'd have to see. <laughs> I mean, never underestimate its power. Don't lose your head, use it. Figure that an atomic bomb dropped on a large modern city like this might kill 50,000 people. That figure might be cut down considerably if folks were properly schooled in individual protection. Handle yourself right and you've got a good chance of coming through. Do the wrong things and you've got a future like an ice cube in a hot toddy. Get panicky and get hurt. Forget about such things as the proper outfits to wear. Light, loose clothes to protect you against flash heat. The enemy was thoughtless. He didn't send you a formal announcement of the big blowout. And you're no quick change artist. Suppose you're taken by surprise. And while we're supposing, let's go all the way. Figure that this is the real article, not just a model. And you're there. Okay, you're in this town and you're on it. Making the best of those three rights they can't take away from you. You're enjoying life. Liberty. You're pursuing happiness. Whatever shape it comes in. <laughs> You're doing all right. When... The other guy's around and he means business, so get going. Remember, you're off base. You've just got time to save yourself. Drop whatever you're doing. Find the nearest hole and make like a mole. A subway's okay. Stay out of flimsy buildings. They give bad protection. A basement's fine, preferably under a solid, well-constructed building. And the safest positions are near strong supporting columns or next to the walls protected from falling bricks and two-by-fours. If there's no underground shelter handy, pick a room in a good building close to the ground. It ought to be airtight and lightproof as possible, with the doors shut, windows closed, and blinds drawn. Back in 1940, London survived a terrific blasting from the Nazi bombers. And one of the reasons was that folks did just what I'm telling you now. It was 
pretty crowded down in those shelters. There wasn't much fresh air. There was more of it up above. But fresh air isn't important. Not unless you're still breathing. Do what those people did, and you're on the right track. World War II bombs were cream puffs compared to what you may be up against. But the defensive measures are about the same. The blast of an ordinary bomb kills and destroys. An A-bomb's kick is much worse. The old horse and buggy bomb was hot stuff. The A-bomb is hotter, so when you get the warning, don't stop to ask what's cooking. It might be you. The big idea, if you've got time enough to swing it, is to shield yourself by thick, strong, heavy material like reinforced concrete from the A-bomb's blast. And heat. Do that, and you'll also be protecting your hide from its radiations. A lot of people, including you men fairly new to the service, got the notion that radiations are like the double whammy turned on by Evil Eye Flegel, the comic strip character. Irresistible, I mean. Well, you're wrong. They're mighty penetrating and deadly, but they can be stopped. Authorities know exactly what it takes. Just what thickness of steel, concrete, or wood will do the trick. But you're no authority. Even if you were, you haven't got your tape measure or calipers with you. Even if you had them, you wouldn't have time to use them. You're just a guy trying to get along. And fast. A heavy wall between you and the source of the blast will cut off most of the radiation barrage. But you don't know where the source will be. And radiations can scatter and bounce off the air the way a basketball bounces off the backboard. What you want, then, is a spot that shields you above and all around. That's if you can find it without wasting time. Comfortable? Not me. I've been figuring I got caught away from any of the shelters. Out in the open. So what do I do? Play dead? Right. Or maybe you will be. <laughs> if there was a ditch handy, you'd flop in it. But there isn't. So hit the dirt, like men did in World War II. Lie flat, face down. Cover the exposed parts of your body. The bomb's flash heat is rugged. Don't get curious and look around. Its light can blind you temporarily. You all with me? Fine. Now we're about as ready as we can be for the fireworks. Bombs away. Just one. I want you to visualize what would happen if the enemy somehow slipped it through our defenses. That it's about as powerful as the ones we used in Japan. And that he wants it to explode about 2,000 feet above the city. Right about... Here. The spot directly below the blast, which we call Ground Zero, is just that, a goose egg, a lot of nothing. And out to a mile or more, the destruction's terrific, with only a few strong structures surviving. Damage naturally peters out from ground zero. But all big explosions are affected by obstacles such as hills. Behind a hill may be a building that came through OK, while further out in the open will be another that went to pieces. The fire started don't exactly follow the rule book either. In here, you might get a frying pan, and back here, a fire.
I've got a very messy picture. Me too. And where do we fit into this? You'd be all right if you found a good spot. Underground and reinforced concrete shelters give good protection close to ground zero. Yeah, but what about me? I'm the guy caught out in the open, stretched across Mother Earth's lap. How am I doing? If you were near ground zero, within three quarters of a mile from it and completely exposed, you'd be a dead duck. A roasted duck. <laughs> and you'd also get a fatal dose of radiation. So what? Any weapon, even a knotted club, might kill you if you're unlucky enough to be in the wrong place. A safe might fall on your head accidentally. You particular how it happens? But if you were far enough away, you'd come through in good shape. And you'd be over the hump. So far as you're concerned, the bomb shot its big wad of blast, heat, and immediate radiation. It goes on sending out rays and particles, but they're rising harmlessly. In about two minutes after the explosion, the area underneath the burst will be free from dangerous radiation. And you can enter it. You've probably got military duties to perform. There's a lot of relief, rescue, and policing work to be done. So after waiting a couple of minutes, get moving. Okay, we survived that one. Now let's put ourselves on the spot again, use our heads and our imaginations a bit more. Because maybe the enemy decides to set off a submarine bomb. Maybe he sneaked it into the harbor on an innocent looking freighter and planted it underwater. Authorities figured it'd have to be plenty deep for the bomb to do its worst. We're going to suppose it's deep enough. Now, chances are you wouldn't get any warning about this baby. You'd sure see it, though. You wouldn't worry about being blasted or burned by a submarine explosion. But watch out for the fog and mist. It's radioactive, packed with poison, and it moves fast. If you saw it advancing on you a mile away, you'd have about 30 seconds to take cover. Make for the nearest entrance, but be orderly about it. That fog has contaminated everything it touched with radioactive matter, which we'll call hot stuff. Although it hasn't anything to do with its temperature. Don't be in a hurry to leave your shelter. Wait till the fog disappears. Then wait a bit longer if you can. It cools off a lot the first few minutes after the blast. Gets less dangerous. It'd be best to wait until the radiological defense men come around to tell you what to do. But if you've got to go, go the right way. Your handkerchief makes a pretty fair filter. Breathe through it. Be quick or be sick. The faster you pass through a contaminated place, the less you expose yourself to radioactive poisoning. Move crosswind as much as possible. Take advantage of cover, of passageways protected from contamination. Don't collect souvenirs like watches and coins. They may be hot. You've gotten out of the danger zone. Your head's in its usual place, your skin still fits. You've got your normal cord of arms and legs souvenirs, you'll get some real pleasures out of it. Sooner or later, you'll run into the radiological defense monitors. They're the detectives of this atomic business. With their instruments, they examine everything for radiation contamination, including you. If your uniforms are hot, they'll end up same as clothes after a skirmish with a skunk. 
They'll go to the laundry if they're not too hot. Or if they're too badly contaminated, they'll be buried or dumped at sea. And you'll give yourself the soap and water treatment to remove any radioactive stuff you might have collected. From then on, you'll watch your step. First, report to the nearest military officer or organization for instructions. As soon as they tell you to, rejoin your own organization. Your commander, on the advice of the radiological defense people, will tell you which areas are safe to enter and which aren't. They'll also advise them on the food you eat and the water you drink. You'll be careful about getting radioactive material inside you. You can get there by breathing dust, eating, or through breaks in the skin. You'll be told how to prevent overexposure to the stuff. How much of it can a guy stand? How much whiskey will it take to knock a guy in his ear? <laughs> well, that depends. It sure does. But the defense people can tell you what the safe limits are. And they'll keep checking in order to determine those limits. The odds on you surviving an A-blast depend a lot on you. OK, Sarge? Right. Get panic here, fat-headed, and you'll probably have a new title. The late John Doe, which isn't exactly a promotion. Use your think tank, follow the rules, and you might live to look it over. That's the picture, man.